If you can't trust your main stage keys rig during live performance, it's not much good, right? But it can be kind of hard to figure out the steps you need to take to ensure that your keys rig is optimized for live performance. In this video, I'm gonna teach you some really simple steps you can take to ensure your worship keys rig in main stage is rock solid. Let me teach you how. All right, folks, so with a software-based keys rig, it's possible that you can ask your computer to do more than it's capable of doing. You could play too many notes at once, you could have too many plugins open, and you can actually overload your computer. Now, obviously, you never want that to happen during a live performance, so I'm gonna give you some really practical tips you can utilize to make sure that your computer isn't being asked to do more than it's capable of at any one time. So first off, inside main stage, you wanna make sure that your audio buffer isn't set to too low of a number. Now, if you're not familiar with this terminology, I'll break it down for you here in a second. Uh, so I can demonstrate, first off, you're gonna go up to main stage three and choose audio preferences, and then click on advanced settings. So here you can see your IO buffer size. IO stands for in and out. You've probably heard the word buffering before and talks about videos like on YouTube or Netflix. In the audio world, larger buffers give your computer more time to think between you playing a note and you hearing a note. So the more time your computer has to process what you're playing, the fewer resources that are going to be used. So in general, larger buffer sizes decrease CPU usage and they decrease the chance of CPU overload. But the trade-off is that larger buffer sizes also increase latency, which is the delay between you playing something and you hearing something. On most modern computers, you never will need to run under 128 to get both good responsiveness and good CPU performance. If you're running into issues with CPU overload, the first and simplest thing to do is increase your buffer size. Now, that latency I mentioned, you can actually get a hard number for what the amount of latency is here in the resulting latency area. And you need to be just concerned with this output number. So you can see right now that I have 7.9 milliseconds of output latency. That means I play something and then 7.9 milliseconds later, I will hear it. Now we're not talking about seconds, we're talking about milliseconds. And just to give you a little bit of context, a physical grand piano has about five or six milliseconds of latency between you playing a note and the actual hammer hitting the string. So the human mind can deal with a little bit of latency. It doesn't feel bad to play a grand piano, it feels natural. So don't get too hung up or too hesitant to increase this buffer size if CPU overload is something that you're dealing with. So that's the first thing. Make sure you know where your buffer size is set to and make sure you understand the way that it impacts your computer's performance. Now the next thing to consider is how many patches are open in your main stage concert. Most folks have one or two patches per song. If you're playing at church, you're probably playing four, maybe five or six songs at any one church service. So if you have 40 patches open in your concert, there's a really good chance that you're not gonna need all 40 for any one live performance. So this is our Sunday Keys template and it comes with some patches opened up ready to play. Uh, it comes with about 20. But anytime I'm ready to perform live inside of Sunday Keys or inside of main stage, I always go up here to file in the menu and do a save as, and then I name it something that I'm gonna remember, like the name of the service or the date of the service where I'm playing, and then I delete all of the patches I don't need for that specific performance. The reason that you wanna do this is because main stage tries to make every patch available for seamless switching at any moment. So you can play on a patch, hold the sustain pedal, select a different patch, and there's not gonna be an audio dropout or break between the old patch and the new one. So every patch in your concert is consuming resources at all times, whether you're using that patch in the moment or not. So the fewer patches open in your concert, the less thinking and CPU usage that main stage has to deal with. So remove all unnecessary patches before any live performance, and that'll go a long way towards reducing CPU usage. So the next thing to consider is that not all plugins or sounds in main stage are created equal. If you're using third-party plugins like 
Omnisphere, Keyscape, Contact Instruments, generally those are gonna use more computer resources than a lot of main stages, factory plugins and instruments. But there's also uh, plugins and instruments within main stage itself that are more resource hungry than others. Some of the most CPU intense plugins in main stage are Alchemy and Space Designer. Alchemy is a really powerful synth plugin with tons of great presets but it uses a lot more resources than simpler plugins in main stage like EXS24 or ES2. Now there's one other thing that can be a real stumbling block for a lot of folks inside of main stage, and I mentioned it already, it's the Space Designer Reverb plugin. Now it's a great sounding reverb plugin and I use it myself sometimes in my sound design, but the problem that people don't uh, automatically realize with this plugin is that it's a part of almost every main stage factory preset. So if you go here to Mainstage's factory preset library and you just grab, for example, a piano patch, it will load into your concert. It's right here, it's ready to play. Sounds good. And Space Designer is nowhere on this channel strip. So you may think, okay, David, what are you talking about? It's just got EQ compressor and delay. Well, the sneaky thing about all of Mainstage's factory presets is they all include concert level bus effects. So you can see I have a small and a large bus send here. So this is what trips people up. So if I go here to the concert level and I scroll over through my aux buses, I can see that adding in that piano patch added two concert level buses to my concert. And they both include Space Designer. Now, if that's all you have at the concert level, then you're probably okay on most modern machines with those instances running. But the problem can come about that you might delete this patch from your concert and you might add some other factory patches. And over time, you're just going to accumulate more and more concert level buses, all featuring the resource hungry Space Designer plugin. So if you use Mainstage's factory presets at all, make sure that you go in afterwards and you address those concert level buses. Otherwise, you are going to run into issues with CPU overload and you're not getting any benefit. They're not actually impacting your sound in any way. So after adjusting your buffer size, after trimming down your concert, you might feel like you're ready for live performance, but there's one thing that folks often overlook, they don't think to do when they're prepping main stage, when they've got things plugged in on stage. This is closing everything other than main stage that might be open in the background of your computer. So you wanna close all of your web browsers, you wanna close your email client, you wanna close everything that you don't need for your live performance. Otherwise, those things are gonna be using RAM, they're gonna be using processing power in the background. If you don't need Wi-Fi, turn off Wi-Fi. If you don't need Bluetooth, turn off Bluetooth. And always, always, always do not disturb. There's no reason for your computer to be thinking about anything other than running main stage. Now, if you connect a MIDI device over Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, then you can go ahead and leave that on. Just know that that is going to be using some of your computer's resources, so you have to take that into account. But seriously, strip away everything that you don't need for your live performance and give main stage as much of your computer's resources as possible. It's really easy to forget this because once you open up main stage and you're in full screen mode, you can't see that anything else is open in the background, but make it a part of your pre-game checklist to make sure all of your background apps are closed and that everything you don't need is shut off. Now, if you've done all of these optimization steps and you're still having issues with CPU overload, sometimes it can help to open main stage in low resolution mode. If your Mac has a retina display, a retina high definition display, then this is something you can do that can actually save you a decent chunk of resources and it's really simple to do. To do this, you go over to Finder and navigate to your Applications folder and then right click on Main Stage 3 and click on Get Info. Here within this tab, there's a little checkbox that says Open in Low Resolution. If you check that box, the next time you open Main Stage, you might notice that it looks a little less crisp. It looks a little bit, well, lower resolution. But the, the benefit to this is that uh, your computer doesn't have to think quite as hard about maintaining or producing all of these high definition graphics. Now, some people get really worried about CPU usage, and that's because of this little window right here at the, at the top of the screen, the CPU usage meter. So as you play, 
you might see peaks like that. Now notice there was no audio dropout or any indication in the out actual output of MainStage that there was a problem. It just looked bad visually. So I know some people will get really alarmed by this CPU indicator. And if you don't see this, you can turn it on in MainStage Display Preferences. But you can double click on it here to get a more in-depth view of the load history uh, that your CPU has on it. Now this is really confusing because you can see we've got zero to 96% here. As soon as I play something, we're up above 100% now. The intuitive thing to think would be 100% is full capacity, but that's just not true in main stage. 100% represents 100% of a single CPU core. So if you have a dual core processor, then you actually have four cores available to you, which is weird because it says dual core, you'd think that was two, but there's this weird thing where you have two physical cores and then your computer has two virtual cores as well. I'm not gonna get into the specifics, just trust me, if you have a dual core Mac, you have four cores, so you could go up to 400% CPU usage before you might actually run into problems. And if you have a quad core Mac, then you can actually go up to 800% before you'll necessarily run into issues. So don't let this CPU indicator freak you out. The most important thing is to trust how it feels and how it sounds. If things are responsive, if your audio sounds nice and clean, then don't get super paranoid if you're getting up above 100 or 200% CPU usage. Uh, make sure that you're making good choices, that your buffer size isn't set too low unnecessarily. Make sure you don't have a bunch of patches open in your concert that you never use. But don't get too paranoid uh, just going off of this visual alone. If it feels good and it sounds good, then you're probably in a good spot. Okay, so the last thing I wanna to touch on is using the headphone jack. Now, a lot of folks will experience little crackles or pops in their audio signal, and they'll think that it's because their computer is experiencing CPU overload. But what we've found with a lot of folks that have reached out to us for help is that that's not actually the case. CPU is just fine, resources are just fine, the problem is that they're using the built-in headphone jack as their audio out. Now, I know folks that use the built-in headphone jack uh, to their soundboard with great success, but for some users, you will experience intermittent popping, crackling sounds. And really, the, the solution or the, the answer that we found is just that the built-in headphone jack isn't designed for long-term pro audio usage. That's what audio interfaces are designed for. So if your CPU usage looks fine, if your resource usage looks fine, and you're still experiencing crackles or pops in your audio output from main stage, it might just be because you're using the headphone jack, which isn't really designed to output professional audio to a sound system. So you might just need an audio interface. Your CPU usage could be totally fine. Folks, main stage can feel really complicated, but understanding how to optimize your rig for CPU usage can give you a lot of confidence in how reliable your live setup is. If you'd like to remove the common barriers to your success in MainStage, I'll include a link in the description of this video to our Sunday Keys template, which comes with tons of ready-to-play sounds, an intuitive visual workspace, and it's already optimized for CPU usage. So if you're ready to take your Live Keys rig to the next level, go ahead and click the link in the description of this video now. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel, like, and leave a comment on this video so you don't miss our next MainStage tutorial. Thanks for watching.